Hello everyone and welcome to the Brain Cyclopedia channel where everything is cognitive. In this channel we make videos on various topics within the fields of psychology and cognitive sciences as well as videos on statistics and research methods used in these fields. If this sounds interesting and relevant to you, do consider subscribing to our channel and pressing the bell icon to stay updated with all of our latest uploads. You can also follow Brain Cyclopedia across all of our social media platforms. The link of these platforms will be given in the description box below. Having said this, let's now jump into today's video in which we will be learning about a famously used behavioral decision-making task in cognitive sciences and psychology research called the Iowa Gambling Task, also commonly referred to as the IGT. The Eye of a Gambling Task, or the IGT, is a very putative cognitive psychology experimental paradigm used to account and or investigate impaired decision-making processes. It was first proposed and developed by Antoine Bashara and colleagues when they were researching at the University of Iowa in 1994. The motivation to build this task stemmed from the interest to study impaired decision-making observed in individuals with a damage in their ventromedial prefrontal cortex or the VMPFC. Previous researchers reported that while patients with a damage to their VMPFC had intact intellect and problem-solving abilities as evidenced by their appropriate performance in tasks such as the Wisconsin card sorting task measuring intelligence, these patients displayed several impairments in their real-life decision-making processes, wherein these individuals consistently made disadvantageous decisions and or optimal choice selection. To empirically test this, Bashar and colleagues had to develop the neuropsychological task of IGT or Iowa Gambling Task because no such paradigm existed to test such patients. Let's now look at the specifics of this task. The goal of the IGT is to measure decision-making impairments of clinical populations in an experimental and or a laboratory setting. To achieve this, it is structured in the form of a game, wherein it aims to mimic real-life decision-making scenario by assessing the ability of the participants to integrate information pertaining to their wins and losses and weigh the benefits and risks associated with each possible option that they may choose during the game. The task starts with the participants being given a play money called the loan money, which can be worth a certain amount, for example, around $2,000, which they are instructed to use to gamble with during the IGT. They are then presented with four card decks labelled A, B, C and D. The participants are instructed to successively choose cards from each of the four decks with the goal to maximise their long-term gains while simultaneously minimising their losses. The task is built such that each card from each deck is associated with a specific amount of monetary reward and potentially a monetary loss as well. The difference between the four decks results in a certain type of a payoff scheme. Two decks out of the four, decks A and B, are associated with high, immediate and constant rewards, but coupled with even higher, unpredictable occasional losses, resulting in negative long-term outcomes. As a result, decks A and B are called as bad or disadvantageous decks. On the other hand, the other two decks, decks C and D, are associated with lower, immediate, constant rewards, but even lower unpredictable occasional losses and thus result in positive long-term outcomes. As a result, decks C and D are called as good or advantageous decks in the IGT. Let's quickly summarize the payoff scheme. There are two different card decks that belong to the disadvantageous decks. Disadvantageous decks in the IGT refer to the decks 
that incur immediate high wins and or rewards, but also very high losses as well. On the other hand, the decks C and D are the advantageous decks that incur immediate low wins, but very low losses as well. Moving on, in addition to the payoff schemes, the IGT also manipulates loss frequency. According to the task structure, the IGT presents frequent losses for the cards of decks A and C, while infrequent losses for the cards from deck B and D. The IGT presents constant feedback to the participant wherein they track the amount of money that has been won and or lost as the participants gamble through. This information is constantly updated and presented while the participant is performing in the task in a computer. The participants are usually presented with numerous trials of gambling, approximately 100 trials in a particular cognitive psychology task is commonly observed. All right, so that is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If this video was helpful, then do not forget to subscribe to Brain Cyclopedia. Give it a thumbs up if this video was helpful, share this video with someone you think will benefit and comment below what do you think about the video and or send us a video request for future videos. Do not forget to press the bell icon to remain updated with all of our recent uploads. Follow us on all of our social media sites. We'll see you in our next video.